Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the basics of DNA. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and we really appreciate it. So thank you everyone who's supporting us and allowing us to continue posting these educational videos on a regular basis. With that being said, let's discuss DNA. DNA is essentially our genetic code. That's where our genes are encoded. That's where all of our information for our cells is contained. It's located in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, it's actually located in the cytoplasm. We didn't write that because we don't think that's really important right now when we're talking about medicine. It comes in later when you're talking about um, when you're discussing uh, infectious diseases and bacterial infections and viral infections. But for eukaryotic cells like human cells, it's located in the nucleus and it contains a polymer of nucleotides. And these are nucleotides right here. You have your ribonucleotide and you have your deoxyribonucleotide. What's the difference between the two? Essentially, it has to do with this OH group. This this OH group gets removed in a ribonucleotide to create a deoxyribonucleotide and that can then go and form the uh, a DNA. Essentially, it can be part of the DNA. You need deoxyribonucleotide to have deoxyribonucleic and nucleic acid, which is DNA. Ribonucleotides will form RNA. And nucleotides themselves are composed of a sugar backbone, which is this right here. This is your sugar backbone. And it's usually a ribose sugar, okay, sugar. And then you have a nitrogenous base located right here. And then you're going to have a phosphate group, which is right here. That is what a nucleotide is composed of. Now, you need to understand the difference between a nucleotide and a nucleoside. Very important because you can get quizzed on this, you can get tested on this, and a lot of people might miss this because it's an easy, easy answer. It's an easy point to get. A nucleotide is a is a structure where you're going to see a sugar backbone right here of a ribose sugar. You're going to have a nitrogenous base and you're going to have a phosphate group. The three main components is going to be present in a nucleotide. In a nucleoside, you're going to have a sugar backbone, which is the ribose backbone. Okay, You are going to have a nitrogenous base, but you are not going to have a phosphate group. So if you have just this structure right here, you are looking at a nucleoside. When you put a, uh, a phosphate group on the side of a nucleoside, you get a nucleotide. That's how I remembered it. It's really stupid, but sometimes it works for some people. Hopefully it works for you. Now, in the, the nitrogenous bases that we're talking about, which are located right here, these nitrogenous bases are going to determine what kind of nucleotide you have and what type of uh, uh, bonding it's going to have. So you have two main types of nitrogenous bases, right? There are five main bases you need to know. Two of them are classified as purines located right here, okay? And these are adenine and guanine. These are your two nucleotide bases that you're going to see attached to nucleotides or nucleosides. And then you have three, uh, uh, three nitrogenous bases called Pyrimidines. Pyrimidines are the cytosine, thymine, and for RNA, you have uracil as well. These are the five main uh, nitrogenous bases that are used in our genetic code that are constantly coding for different aspects of our body, for different proteins, and different uh, uh, mechanisms that are going to go down. Now, nucleotides are named after their nitrogenous base, okay? Their, their name changes from the nitrogenous base names, essentially. So adenine is going to become adenosine when you bind it to the, uh, the ribose and the uh, phosphate group. This is your nucleotide, okay? Adenosine and guanosine. So you're going to go from guanine, which is the actual name of the nitrogenous base right here. This is adenine. And this is guanine. When you bind it to the ribose and phosphate group, essentially, and you create a nucleotide, it's going to be now called adenosine and guanosine. The same is going to go for the, the, uh, for the, the pyrimidines as well. You have cytosine, which is this nitrogenous base. It becomes cytidine. You have thiamine which is this nitrogenous base. It becomes thymidine. And then you have uracil, right here it becomes uridine 
That is very important to understand. These are all going to be synthesized as monophosphates, so one phosphate group, but you can attach multiple phosphates to create uh, energy. So for example, adenosine monophosphate is this nitrogenous base right here, but if you add two more phosphate, you're going to go from AMP to ATP. And like I wrote right here, it can be converted to triphosphate forms in order to be added to DNA. Now, DNA structure is composed of chromatin. Chromatin is essentially DNA plus protein, especially these histone proteins right here, which function to bind DNA together. And this is usually going to be found in the nucleus of the eukaryotic cells. So you can have heterochromatin in which you have highly condensed DNA. Heterochromatin is highly condensed. So hetero, highly condensed DNA, it is not easily transcribed. Well, if you have DNA that's very, very tightly wound up, there's not going to be any space for other proteins to come in, unwind the DNA, and then be able to read the DNA. This is going to mean you're going to have low uh, frequency of transcription occurring in this type of chrome in this type of DNA. There's going to be significant amount of DNA methylation in the upcoming videos. We're going to talk about DNA methylation and histone acetylation. All those are going to be discussed, but under Understand that in heterochromatin, you're going to have high amount of DNA methylation, which means you're going to have low transcription. Okay, so high DNA methylation means low transcription occurring. And then you have euchromatin. Euchromatin is less condensed DNA, and that's going to mean you're going to easily transcribe that DNA and be able to create RNA and proteins much easier. In this type of DNA, in this structure, you're going to have high amount of histone acetylation occurring, and that's going to mean you're going to have more likelihood of transcribing those genes. Now, chromatin gets condensed into chromosomes, okay? That's what is happening. So when you have chromatin and it gets condensed even more and more, you're going to see those classic chromosomes right here that you see during metaphase. And that usually occurs during the cell cycle when the cell is getting ready to uh, actually divide and split up into two cells. And with that being said, that is the basics of our DNA overview lecture. We're going to dive more into this lectures in the upcoming video, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back here real soon.